hello everybody in this video I'm going to show you guys how to use a Garmin Nuvi 2555 LMT now LMT stands for stands for lifetime maps and traffic so if your GPS is Garmin Nuvi 2555 without LMT the instructions are exactly the same except that your GPS doesn't qualify for a lifetime traffic and lifetime maps from Garmin. Okay, so this is how we use it. First, uh, before starting to use your GPS, you need to set up all the settings that will uh, basically uh, meet your needs. So you go to settings. First thing, you set up the maps and vehicles based on your need so vehicle what kind of icon you want for your vehicle so you, if you have a truck you can choose a truck or a car this is not not a big deal but you know you could choose the shape of the vehicle that will be displayed okay so save that and then the map view the map view if you choose 3d this is how the map is going to look like if you choose north up uh, the map's gonna look flat and uh, where you're driving uh, will not be up only north will be up so if you're going south on the screen of the GPS your vehicle will be moving this way I mean this way if you're going south if you're going west it will go this way and so on if you go track up this means wherever whichever direction you're headed will be on top of the screen so even if you're going south it will show the vehicle going this way if you're going east it will show the vehicle going this way I think the best one to choose is 3D uh, as far as navigation is concerned but you could always see which one uh, meets your need or your specific taste okay so now uh, pedestrian uh, map view so this is something if you're walking you could choose uh, this in, in, uh, desired track up or north up if you're a walking uh, pedestrian or you don't have a car this is usually not the case so you don't have to worry about that now map details I like it more but you could always choose normal or less the difference is that if you choose less or normal smaller streets will not show up on the map only major roads and highways will show up it will only show if you choose normal it will only show the smaller streets if you're driving on them it doesn't show as a side uh, uh, view like it is now for example if I choose less then you see I only see the highways I don't see the little streets if I choose normal I see a few of the little streets but not all of them but if I ch choose more then I see everything that's on the side and I like that always so choose that if you prefer the same okay uh, map theme map theme is the layout of the map and the color configuration which you can choose now you have Garmin configuration which has a gray background and orange uh, uh, roads and white color streets this is also similar uh, the Belgium color this is Denmark color where the ground is shown in yellow and the roads are uh, you know white in other colors and let's go down and then you have Deutschland or Germany that's how it shows the map France that's the preference Italian map layout so there are all a whole bunch depending what you like I like the Garmin one the original native one because uh, that's what I'm used to so you can always use that now map buttons these are the buttons that will show up on the screen you can add a button you can remove a button and so on so you could restore the default in normal these are the buttons that will show up on the map and you know you could eliminate them or and so on okay map layers map layers you could choose multiple layers of the map uh, like the trip log uh, and then the traffic map where the traffic congestion is shown on a different layer places along the road you could have a layer of like points of interest if you like so you know this is the default setting but you can change that okay and dashboard the dashboard is the 
way the map appears. So this is one uh, type of dashboard, which is the default. And then you have a different type of dashboard where it shows elevation, time, speed, n uh, driving direction, like it's north or whatnot. And then you have another one that shows like a car dashboard with a kilometers per hour or you know miles per hour, speedometer, elevation. And then you have this kind. And you have this kind. There's so many different ones that you can choose from. And whatnot. So if you wanted the original one, just hit ha cancel, and the original one will be restored. Okay, my my maps are the na the type of maps that you have in this GPS. So let's see, we have uh, 2014 North American map on this. You could disable or enable a map. If you have multiple maps, you could disable one and enable the other to make the GPS perform faster and not load those maps which you don't necessarily need. And uh, navigation, uh, this is the route preferences that you can set. For example, you could choose in the calculation mode, faster time. Faster time will take you to uh, highways and uh, fast uh, track roads, but it's going to avoid uh, uh, traffic congestion. It will gonna, it's going to avoid streets with multiple traffic lights. But if you choose shortest, shorter distance, it will take you to a shortest route. Yeah, but it could be a longer time because you could be in multiple red lights uh, and if you choose less fuel it will take you to the route where the elevation uh, is not going to increase on you to have the vehicle go through uh, high gas mileage because it has to go up the hill like you know like going down the hill and up the hill like that it's not going to do that off-road is obvious if you choose off-road it will take you to non-pavement roads now off-road is not good if you have a sports car uh, like a flat Corvette or something but you could always use it if you have a SUV uh, like sport utility vehicles now uh, in some cases you can only go off-road if you have a dirt bike for example which is not street legal so then you have to choose that okay so let's go back and cancel because it was faster time and that's how we want it. Okay, so here is avoidance. Avoidance is very important to uh, kind of select before you use your GPS. Uh, uh, these are the, whatever, whichever box is checked, that's the particular uh, condition that the GPS will avoid. For example, if you have a big rig, a big truck or, or, or a semi or an RV, you cannot make U-turns easily, so you want to avoid U-turns. If you have a bicycle, you're not allowed to go in, in highways, so you want to check highways and avoid them. If you're always traveling alone, um, you have to avoid carpools. If you don't have a lot of cash on hand, you have to avo avoid toll roads. So there is the carpool. There is the high traffic area you need to avoid. Ferries you need to avoid. So, you know, uh, unpaved roads you need to avoid in case you have a vehicle that cannot go off-road. So, you know, that's what avoidance means. Now, custom avoidance or the avoidance that you avoid an area. For example, let's say you're living in East LA or some somewhere where it's like uh, certain uh, unsafe neighborhoods, and you don't want to be routed through those unsafe neighborhoods where where they have high crime rates. Then you can uh, add an avoidance to that. Okay. So let's see, avoidance detour. You could you could detour the avoidance if you have to, you know. Uh, limit walking to maximum distance. If you if you want to limit the walking to maximum distance, you could do that so the GPS doesn't make you walk like ten miles. Uh, public transit. Uh, you could you know choose that. You know what kind of public transits you want the map to show. That's very good to have. Uh, and safe mode is uh, I don't like safe mode because I have full confidence in myself but this is good for people who are new at driving uh, and if you choose this uh, safe mode the GPS will not allow you to use it or enter any address when the vehicle is moving it will ask you to pull over and park before you punch in an address so that's safe mode if you if you disable this it will allow you to punch in an address even if the vehicle is in motion okay GPS simulation is only good if you're going through like a tunnel where the GPS uh, signal is weak um, and you could kind of simulate the, your speed as you enter the tunnel it, uh, the GPS will sim uh, simulate your speed to 
kind of guess where you are in the middle of the tunnel. That's the only good use for it. Or if you have like streets, like underground streets like Chicago. I was in Chicago and there were like whole intersections under the ground. So in that case, you need the GPS simula simulator. Okay, map and vehicles, you know, this is something that we went through. 3D maps and whatnot. So basically, I'm going in circles here. So let's go back. And those are the settings. So we did all the settings. Now I'm, I'm going to go to display. Um, in display, you could choose um, orientation. You can choose a landscape or portrait. You know, portrait will be sideways like that. And landscape will be uh, like that. So uh, obviously I like landscape. I'm going to keep it that way. Um, color mode, you could choose daytime and you could choose nighttime, which will be like this if you choose nighttime. And you could choose automatic, which will automatically change to day and night based on the darkness on the in the sky or where you are. So that's that. Okay. Save that. Mm, brightness, you could adjust back and forth. You could go very dark. You could go very bright. 100% is too bright. I'm going to go to 90. And uh, display timeout. If you want the display to go dim after a certain time, you could do two minutes. I actually, to be honest with you, I don't want any display timeout. So I'm going to go never and save. Okay. Mm. What else do we have? Screen. Uh, screenshot is if you want to take a picture of what's on the screen. And if you choose, if you enable this, you will be given an icon of a little camera where you punch in and take a picture of that particular map region. It's a good thing to have if you're traveling to a foreign country where you don't know what's where. Okay, date and time and units of measurements is very important. If you're in the United States, you, uh, you'd have to choose uh, like miles. If you're in other countries, you have to choose kilometers. And then if you want a 12 hour time frame or a 24 hour time frame, uh, this one is uh, to lock the device, uh, I mean to, to set the clock of the device. Now, in, in none of the GPSs, you could adjust the time. You can only, you can only adjust the region or like, uh, you know, you have to choose automatic because you need to choose the region you are in. If you change the time, your navigation will go crazy. Uh, so it's good to have automatic time. Okay. All right. Let's see. We did that. Now, language. Uh, you have to choose uh, every language that has a human being name followed by that language. For example, American English, and then there's a name of a lady, Jill. That means that language has TTS, text to speech, or it will pronounce the road names. Uh, if same thing with Jack. But if you uh, just choose American English, uh, then like without speaking the street names, then it will not speak the street names. So that's that. Uh, okay, let's see. Keyboard language is the language you enter the address. So keyboard language is currently set to uh, American English. But if you go to a country where all the streets or all the addresses are named in, in a different native language, then you have to change this uh, to that language. Otherwise, you cannot punch in the address. So it's good to have this feature. Uh, all right. Uh, keyboard uh, layout is, is how you want your alphabet to appear. You could have it like a computer, which is Q-W-E-R-T-Y or A-B-C-D-E-F-G, which is normal. Uh, always, I like to use the one that looks like a computer layout. Okay, so the traffic, if you have a traffic condition, you can do that. Units and time, you can adjust the units. Like uh, to, uh, this, uh, we already went through this. So, you know, that's that and device information and privacy setting you don't have to worry about that and if you want to change the volume control you go here and that's your volume and uh, also if you want to use the gps we click where to and then if you want to go home you punch home if you want to punch in an address you punch in an address and you know you could change this uh, Make sure to enter what the, the GPS is asking for. Right now it's asking for house number, enter the house number. And then followed by other places, uh, other inputs. Okay, now if you see, right now it's, a, it's, it's telling me searching in Chicago. And if I'm in a different area, not Chicago, then I'll click this and, and uh, change it to somewhere else, like a different city. For example, let's say I'm in San Diego. I'm going to write... San 
Diego. Okay, and then I'm going to search. And then I'm going to choose which San Diego. There's a San Diego in Texas, there's a San Diego in California and whatnot. So I'm going to choose San Diego, California. Now, if I enter an address, it will ask me for the house number of an address in San Diego. So that's how that works. And this is like points of interest, like restaurants. You could go to different restaurants, different type of restaurants, you know, fast food, fish and seafood, delis, this and that. If you don't know the name of the restaurant, you could search for it by name. For example, let's say we want to search Starbucks. So we go star. Starbucks. There you go. So now I hit search. It's going to make a couple of circles and search st Starbucks near San Diego. So it's going to come up with a whole bunch of Starbucks because San Diego is a big city. But uh, there you go. So let's say I want to go to the Harton Plaza Starbucks and that's the one I choose and then I click go. And if I want just the information for that place, I don't want to go to that place, just need the information, then I click here, and it's going to give me their phone number, their address, and whatnot, so I could contact that Starbucks before I go there, if I want to know if they're open and whatnot. Okay. All right, so that's uh, searching by name. The same thing, uh, you could search for gas stations and write down which gas station you want to go to. You could go to shopping centers and whatnot, and you could go to, uh, like, add another shortcut there if you want to, and go from there. Okay? So this was like a, you know, like a pretty quick um, uh, guidance on how to use your Garmin Nuvi 2555 GPS, and I hope you learned something from this, and if you have any questions, please let me know. And please don't forget to like and comment.